Welcome to my review of Altered Beast for the Sega Genesis. So this was my first game on the Sega Genesis. Actually, it was a pack-in game with the system. It came with the system when I first got it, probably in 89, 1989. And um, I was fucking blown away by this game from a presentation standpoint. Um, you know, I had seen this game in Bowling Alley Arcade, um, but and it looked, you know, the, the visuals were incredible. So to see this kind of art style and visuals and music and sound on a home console, you know, just coming off the NES was mind-blowing, you know. I mean, you know, it was it was really impressive at that time because graphics were so simple. So to go from something like NES graphics to this was, was, was insane at that time. So that's the thing I remember most about this game was the presentation. The music is amazing. You know, of course, in my reviews, I don't really know how to had a mixed sound with my voice without my voice getting drowned out since I'm not an editing professional, but um, maybe in the future, but most of my videos, I just try to get the information out. So, yeah, the, the presentation in this game was awesome. The art style, that's still the biggest thing for me with this game. Now, when you look at just the gameplay, the gameplay is decent, but the gameplay is really, you know, it's not the best. It's nothing like, it's nothing that really stands out from a gameplay perspective. You do have co-op, which makes the game a little bit more enjoyable, I would say, but I mostly play the game single player. As far as difficulty goes, um, it's quite an easy game if you if you practice it with save states and like learn what to do on the bosses. It's a pretty fucking easy game to beat. Um, now that said, if you're not using, I believe the continue, there's a continue code in the instruction manual, so you may consider that legit to use. But I did beat the game 1cc on the hardest setting, which I will, uh, I'll, I'll list the tutorial in the description. You can check that out if you want. That has commentary, breaks down all my strats. But, um, yeah, like the game, especially if you're playing it on normal, it, it's really not difficult to beat on the one credit without losing a continue if you do practice the sections. You have to know what to do on the bosses, though, especially. And then the game is really, because it's a short game, so it's not too difficult to learn if you practice with save states and put it together. Um, I don't remember exactly how long it took me when I revisited it, but it was also a game that I was very familiar with when I was young, though I didn't master it when I was younger. But I had already beaten it um, with the continue code. This time I ended up doing a 1cc on the hardest mode just to do something different with it and, you know, to have some footage for my channel. Because a lot of, you know, more than half of the games that I've completed in my lifetime were done, um, you know, well before I had recording capabilities. So I do revisit some games. And sometimes I'll revisit them on the hardest mode just to do something different. So I can, um, you know, add something to my game's beaten list in the description. I can add, oh, you know, now I beat it on a harder setting or something. At least it's something different than just beating the game again that I've already completed. So yeah, in this game, you play as a regular human character. And as you collect these orbs from these um, two-headed wolves you will, it's the blue ones that you want to get the orbs from. When, when you get the orb, you will power up to the next level. So you'll go from a regular skinny guy to semi-muscular, then you'll go to like super muscular with the next orb. And then the third orb will turn you into a beast. And each stage has a unique beast that you turn into. Aside from the final stage, which it has a golden version of the werewolf, but it's the same thing that you turn into in the first stage. But aside from that, you have a unique beast you transform into in each stage, which is a really unique feature that wasn't seen really in any other games at the time, so it was a very cool gimmick. But, you know, the game kind of relies on some of those gimmicks and presentation more so than the gameplay, because the gameplay is okay, but it does feel a little sloppy at times. You get knocked around a lot, and there's a lot of shit coming at you. You know, you have your kicks and stuff like that, and it's a totally learnable game. But, you know, it just doesn't feel like the, the tightest, most engaging gameplay. It's kind of like you know, very samey from stage to stage. It's very similar. And there's not a lot of variety in the gameplay. And it's also very short. So, you know, like I said, from a gameplay perspective, it wouldn't rank high on my list at all. But um, the reason that I like it so much is nostalgia and, and the presentation of art style and music and all that shit is the main things that I really like about the game. But I try not to let that, and you know, and you know, um, affect the review score too much because I'm more, you know, gameplay to me is the main thing in a game. 
So even though I like it more than my review score is going to say that I like it, because I like the game a lot, it's one of the most memorable Genesis games for me. So I actually really, really like the game. But I try to remove some of that bias, and, and you know, I'm trying to look at it at, at, uh, from the viewpoint of someone who's never played it before, even someone who plays modern games going back to it, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to kind of look at it from what it offers the player, you know, and how engaging is the gameplay. So, a lot of the bosses are very simple with spammy moves. As you see me doing, I just spam the, the roll with the bear and take out that boss. The first boss, I'm spamming the move where I just keep jetting into the boss with the werewolf. The dragon, I'm just spamming electricity to take out the dragon. The final boss, you just spam uh, trip kicks, sweep kicks, to take him out. Um, or I think it's fireball, something like that. You'll see in the video, I think I show it, but I do explain all that in the tutorial. The only boss where you actually have to fight it with some kind of skill is the boss on this stage. So, you know, now in this video I believe I'm showing the full game for this review because it's such a short game. And, you know, I figured it's worth at least a 10 minute, 11 minute review. It's a it's, it's short review anyway, but, so I show the full playthrough here. This was my 1cc on the hardest mode. But yeah, this is the only stage where you actually have to learn how to fight the boss and use some kind of skill. And as far as the stages go, you're seeing me end this game at about 10 or 11 minutes on the hardest setting. And you got to realize that the reason it's ending so quickly is because if you know where the, um, the three-headed or two-headed wolves spawn, the blue ones, if you know when they're going to come out and you position yourself right, you can collect those blue orbs immediately. And if you don't miss a blue orb, you'll transform um, very shortly into the stage. See, the stage has several phases whenever... The electric guy appears at the end means that that's your chance to fight the boss. But you only get to fight the boss if you are transformed into a, into a beast. Now, I think there is a way to fight the bosses in human form if you, like, fuck up for a really long time and don't collect the orbs. I think it'll just make you fight the boss as a human. But you're meant to fight the bosses in beast form, as you see here. In this stage, it's the tiger. And this is the only stage we actually have to learn how to fight the fucking boss. And as far as the stages go, you can end them probably in under a minute most of them or two minutes or something like that if you know how to collect those orbs you just have to do a little spawn memorization which you can do with save and load state practice and then you will end the stages really fast and i explain all these tactics so if you're if you really want to beat the game and and get a good idea of how to do it i think my tutorial will break everything down that you need to know especially for normal since it's on the hardest mode but um yeah, the thing is, you can end the stages really early. You have control over when the stages end, pretty much, by collecting the orbs as quickly as possible. The idea is, if you let those blue guys, the guys with the orbs, if you let them um, run past you, then you just missed an orb. But if you get all three of them, then you won't miss any phases of the stage, and you'll, you'll be able to get to the boss on the first phase of each stage. And when I say phase, I'm talking about when the electric guy shows up. That's your time to face the boss if you're in beast form. And if you do it right, you can you can get to the bosses on the first phase of each stage, which is an extremely short amount of time before you get to a phase in a stage. So that's why the whole game is completed in, in um, you know, like 11 minutes or 10 minutes, and it, it's not even a speed run. So, you know, it just shows how short the game is, and it's not too big of a deal to do it on one CC if you know how to play it and you know how it works, which, like I said, I break all that down. But you see this boss... It takes a lot of hits, and it's the only fight that goes on for a while. But it's not hard once you have strategies that you kind of kind of stick by. You just stick by certain strategies that I explained. And if you do that, you shouldn't have too much trouble with it, but you'll want to practice. The only boss you really need to practice with save and load states that, that you may have to do you know, a substantial amount of practice, at least a few minutes of practice on it. The other boss is like, once you know what to do, it's just you know, position yourself somewhere and just mash the button and spam the move. So... For a lot of these reasons that I'm mentioning, I, I just don't think that the gameplay is anything, you know, anything great. Now, the arcade version is significantly harder, and um, maybe that would be one that I should try to 1cc at some point. It's very easy. You can just put in credits to win. There's no consequences for death. But um, I, it might be a cool one to try to do on low credits or something like that. It seemed a lot harder. But it was also harder for me because I was trying to use the same exact strats that I used in my, my playthrough of the Genesis version, you know. I probably just need to, to, you know, put time into practicing it in sections like I did with this and, and put it together. And it may not be too bad then, but I'll have to maybe revisit it in the future and see. 
But you can see I got the transformation already, and now this final stage is going to be over as soon as that electric guy shows up, and I will be fighting the final boss. So you see how little content there can be in this game when you just understand how it works and you don't miss any of the orbs. You only need to get three to make your transformation. So like once you know the game, you can really fucking break it. You know, and it's, it's just there's not a hell of a lot of content to keep you playing. But like I said, I think the atmosphere and music is some of my favorite of, of any games in history of gaming, you know. But to be fair, that's just presentation, and a lot of that is just my nostalgia and my affinity for it, you know, and the way it hit me when I was young and, and you know, all that kind of stuff. So I have to try to leave some of that. I mean, leave most of that out for the review and, and give it a fair review. So I'd give the game a 6.5 out of 10. For me, of course, it ranks much higher in my enjoyment level, but I, I'd say it's a fair and decent game. I think it's a decent, solid game. And now if you enjoy the atmosphere as much as I do, then you're probably going to really enjoy the game and really like it, but, you know, i got to try to keep my reviews gameplay focused since I believe that's king of any game. Like, I know story and everything, it's a cool bonus, and it could be good, but for me, gameplay is always going to be king because I've played games that had incredible visuals, and they were pretty shitty, like uh, a game like Take Rise for the Xbox One when that came out. That Roman uh, game, great presentation, awesome presentation, very bland and repetitive game. I did kind of have fun with it, but it wasn't a very good game. And, you know, it had awesome visuals. So, it really, visuals are nice when you first see them, but it doesn't, it doesn't you know, have any kind of long-term appeal to me. So, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know, and thanks for watching.